Good afternoon, good evening, good night. Whenever you listen to this, welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. What another an amazing episode. This episode actually kind of resonates with me too. I did a chat a few months ago with uh, Kareem Buktor where we shared his journey and a week later he hypnotized me. Same for Renee Marie. Um, we went through her journey last week. Uh, an unbelievable journey. If you missed that one, you have to go back and watch it. Uh, we talk about the military, some of the traumatic experience that she went through, some of the feelings that she suppressed as a child growing up and some of the psychic um, visions that she's encountered her old life and kind of suppressed. She doubts herself with these thoughts, but she's starting to embrace her journey in this regard. Look at her. She's absolutely incredible. Check her out on social media. Give her a follow. But today, we had to do this episode because in the pre-chat I shared before, she mentioned two of names of my mum's best friends. And it carries on today. She mentioned names spot on. We bring up a particular story. I ring my mum live on the show and ask her to verify the story of the picture that we're talking about. I'm not going to give any more than that uh, because I think you just have to listen to it. Um, sometimes there's a bit of silence in there for a longer period of time, but I want to assure you there's nothing wrong with your audio or nothing wrong with your speakers. Just sit tight and listen to it. She's um, Renee's doing her thing. And um, it's amazing to hear and listen and watch. And uh, she breaks some of that story down. And um, yeah, it's just it's just amazing. I've never really done anything like that before. And she pulled me in when she said those two names, Jean and Pam. And we go through that story again in the show. So listen to that. It's fascinating. We, she teaches us about uh, that side of things, that spiritual side as well. So it's fascinating. Even if you're not, even if you're a bit of a skeptic. It's, it's a lot of learning it's learning it's cool it's fun so um and she's amazing and uh, you can if you listen to last week's episode that you'll it'll make sense of why she's doing what she's doing so please go back watch it listen to it wherever you may do and please follow the show on spotify apple and youtube and uh, youtube gets split up into five parts um if you would prefer smaller chunks if not spotify and apple give us a follow anyway uh you've been awesome i love where the show is going and um thank you for joining me on my journey everybody We'll be right back with Renee Marie. Welcome to Leading Our Own Way. I'm your host, Andrew White, and this is the podcast that unveils captivating narratives of resilience and personal triumph. This podcast is for anyone seeking inspiration and insights on overcoming life's challenges. Follow and subscribe, and then we can lead together forever. One action. <laughs> <laughs> Renee Marie, you make me laugh. Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way. How are you doing this evening? I'm so good. Thank you for having me back. I'm really excited to be here. Well, after last week's episode, and we'll obviously get into why we're doing the episode in a second, um, because you kind of got me freaked out at the same time. Um, but the episode that we did last week was fascinating. Uh, your episode was fascinating. Your journey and your the things you've been through to get to the point in your long, young life of where you are now is absolutely incredible. So I advise anyone who's tuning in this week because we're doing a special, special reading tonight, aren't we? Yeah. Um, for them to go back, hear your journey, because I think that would make more sense before tuning into this episode. So yes, please go back to last week's episode with Renee Marie with, and myself here on Leading Our Own Way. But let's move on because today, <laughs> totally exciting. Tell us what we're going to do today. Okay, so what we're going to do is, number one, Prince Henry's always got to make his little appearance. He made his appearance in last week's episode as well. He's he my little spiritual protector. Um, but what we're doing on this episode is we're doing a psychic reading for Andrew. So in our pre-chat, do you want to share what happened in the pre-chat? And we'll yeah, I mean... <laughs> Oh, where do I even begin? So we've, guys, we've been on the phone for maybe two and a half hours. My pre-chats are only supposed to be 30 minutes, but anyone who knows me knows I like to talk and I've met somebody who likes to talk just as much as me. So <laughs> I, I feel like you're a bit of a connection person like myself, high energy and just want to be around people. Oh. Um, so we're, we're talking and obviously you bring up uh, the journey of your spiritual side and your psychic I don't know even what the right word to do is psychic skills, powers, talents. I don't know what the right word is. Uh, and then I was, I was reluctant to do it, but I went for it. And I said, oh, so do you sense anything for me? And, um, and you did and you didn't at first, but then we kind of touched base on it a little bit afterwards, if I, if I remember correctly. And you said to me, um, 
does any does do the letters J and P mean anything to you? I stayed very blank because there's no J and P directly in my life, and obviously this selfishness comes over thinking it's somebody close to me, friend, um, you know, past relatives and whatnot. And um, nothing came to me. And you expressed that you doubt yourself, you doubt your thoughts, and you've suppressed them for such a long time in, in your journey. And obviously that's in last week's episode where you're going a little bit deeper about that. And because you were doubting your thoughts, even though in your mind it came across so, it came so prevalently, it was powerful, the names were powerful. You went with the letters J and P, but I didn't react. So you said, well, I've got nothing to lose in a sense. I'm just going to say the names. And you said, Jean and Pam. I wish I was recording because I kind of jumped out of my seat. I started towards her and like, if I could do it now and I'm freaking out and I go on to say, Jean and Pam are my mum's two best friends that died in the last 10 years. Now I know the second biggest killer, big second biggest, biggest killer in the world is, is cancer. And they did die of cancer. And if you'd said that to me straight away, well, like, okay. Yeah, you've got that one. And if you've even, and I've been sharing this story a million times. I said it, I said to people, if she'd got Jean and Jackie or Jean and Paul or whatever, I'd gone, all right, you got pretty good there, 50%. But Jean and Pam, <laughs> we'd only just met this day. We'd been on the phone for two hours, but it was about your journey because we preparation for the episode. And um, I just lost it absolutely lost it and i think my reaction reassured you in a way because of the self-doubt that you have in this particular area but i don't see that self-doubt because when if you, anyone follows online you can see how confident you are and i just see a different side of you than what i do see on online i, I love it because i feel like i've got this vulnerability out of you in a way mm -hmm. but anyway back to that yeah we just it just you just nailed it didn't you and i was just like freaked out that's never happened to me before um, but Jean and Pam, one, are not very common names in the modern day, I don't think. They're, um, I don't, you, we don't have any, um, we don't, well, we didn't at that point have each other on social media. And even if you did, I never, put, Jean and Pam are my mum's best friends who died one, I think, five years ago and one, 11 years ago. There's no reference anywhere to it, even if you did search me up. <laughs> my Lord. I know. Um, Your draw. There anyway, you go, sorry. <laughs> when your jaw dropped like because they came through so strong like as yeah. soon as you were like oh are you feeling anything like I could feel it's like this warp like this real energy around me and I'm like oh like yes I am sensing it and then you're like who is it and then it came in instantly both names came in instantly like so loud and I was like because with my psychic abilities and this area this is something I've suppressed and I go into it through um last week's episodes but I had suppressed this so much like I was very highly psychic when I was younger I would like be able to feel like I was speaking to spirits I felt like I'd see things in my room um like almost every night I was screaming and my parents had to come in because I was so scared of like what I was seeing in my room um I knew who was sick I knew who was coming what they were wearing um uh, I would be able to just like be such a young little girl and connect with people and know how they're feeling and they didn't express it or like know what's going on for them um and so just through life I suppressed it but it always stayed there and like it's really helped me in the realm of like because I work in the personal development industry for over five years even in the military like I had it in the military like I remember there was this one time at Katuka, which is um recruit training so when you first go into the military you go in there and one like one night I woke up and I just went and walked to the mirror like I don't know if I was sleepwalking or something but I just went and looked in the mirror and I saw this man staring back at me like definitely a ghost like and he had like his hat on like dark face and like he had um like his eyes were bright and I just remember looking and I wasn't afraid and I could just feel the energy um, in that space. And I was like, what is going on? Like, it's always been, been there. And I've been like afraid of it, but not afraid of it. If that makes sense. It's like, I'm like, want to embrace it, but there's this part of me that has held back. And so I have felt it becoming more and more, especially in terms of suffering with migraines. I, um, I've been getting so many migraines like over like the last year because I feel like I have really not been clearing my third eye and my crown and it's like it's trying to get me to go within and connect with it and so 
God, I think it was over a month now. I think almost two months was when I went to a course on light language and it popped open. Like, and I remember sitting down um, with this lady and doing a full reading, described her whole house and everything, even to the point where I started going like this with my fingers. I'm like, why am I doing this? Like, and I was like, okay, I'm getting like thumb thumb wars. And then I started describing her home. And by the time I opened my eyes, she was like crying. She's like, I do that with my daughter. We always do thumb wrestling um, recently. And like I said, coloring books and she like colors in the house. And I said, I'm seeing like a pool, but like the pool doesn't belong there. And she's like, we just had someone come in and bring the pool into the home. So, so many things have happened in that time where I've just sat down and I've channeled and I've just trusted it and it comes through. And yes, the self-doubt comes in because it's like you look at your psychics in this day and age and they look a certain way. You know, if we stereotype uh, like a, a psychic and um, I was like, there's that imposter in me that it's like, oh, I'm a bit of a baby psychic. Like I'm just popping open. I'm just awakening to it. I'm trying to make sense of it. I get visions. I get feelings. I'm trying to make sense of like the symbols and literally just on the weekend my mum's friend is actually psychic and we went for we went for um lunch and she got me some like crystals like this is the this is the uh peacock orb which is really good for opening up your crown chakra and she's got all of these books for me to learn so that I can keep diving and and that's the thing I never had a mentor in this aspect I've always had a mentor in mindset and energy but not specifically the psychic thing now and how to how to cultivate it and then with Andrew my first experience feeling mediumship or connecting to spirits was Gene and Pam and I haven't stopped talking about it as well Man, so I um, shared that story with people yeah all the time well I mean me too even tonight on the I had to do a dog walk and um <laughs> early on in the afternoon and I saw somebody and I told him what I was doing tonight and I'm like Lost it. Yeah, it's just so going back to that guy in the mirror. Uh, before we get into it, um, was he there to scare you, or was he there for like to support you or peace or whatever? I don't know. I didn't feel anything. Um, I didn't feel any fear. Mm -hmm. um, Did he look scary? Yeah, yeah, he looked scary. He definitely looked scary, but he wasn't scary. He looked it, but he didn't present act it. it as yeah. scary. He didn't act it. He was just there and. It was like I was looking in the mirror and it was seeing his react, like his reflection. It wasn't, I wasn't in the mirror. Like it's crazy. And then <laughs> there was another, there was another time in my um, childhood home, my grandparents' childhood home. Um, I was, my parents were in like the lounge room and all the lights were off, but they had the lights on where they were and the TV on. And I was staying in the front room, which is where they used to have this poker room where people would always come in like for years and years and two people even passed away in that room. Um, there was no doors open. The door was sealed shut. There was no windows open. You can't get, can't get to the opening of the window because there's a wardrobe there. And I just opened the door to go in. And there was this draft of cold wind. This is probably like I would have been a teenager and this cold wind went through me and no windows open, no doors open. I just lightly opened the door to go in and I just like froze and then it blew out the TV that my parents, like it, they were like, oh, what's happened? And I was just standing there like frozen, literally. Yeah, wow. What was the very, very first time that you realized you had something? I have been, honestly, like the first thing that came to my mind was three. And I remember like being in my room and like I could see, you know how you just like you open your eyes and you see everything, you see what's in front of you, but I could see all these speckles everywhere like in front of me and in the room and I could feel like presence I could feel all of these like things or people but this energy I felt it around me and then I just used to like have like voice like voices come into my head and speak to me and um and like I would even say to my parents like I got my imaginary friends and they're like oh yeah that's cute imaginary friends um but it's 
probably because they're actual ghosts. <laughs> and even now, even now to this day, even still, the other day, like I feel present, I feel presence around me and I'm still a little shut off to it because I'm so like there's that part of me that's scared to like really open and embrace it and let the switch flip and then being able to see everyone. Mm, and I know. I've... Like I think that and I was laying down doing one of my meditations. Um I'm even getting like a cold wind. Oh. Now. Yeah. Right now. Oh yeah. My God. Is that cold um, wind like supposed to be scary? I mean, are you sensing it's supposed to be scary? It's just to no, let them know. Do they not. can they sense that you can contact contact them? Do they know you know? Yeah, yeah. it's like a um, like moths to a light. Like yeah. you're, the, you're this light, and they they come. And actually, I'll share with you another thing. But I was laying doing my meditation the other day, um, and I felt this like this swirl like of energy, like this swirl of energy. And there was no, the wind wasn't blowing. Um, and I could just, I could just feel it. I could feel this presence. And I just pulled myself out of it. Cause I'm just like, oof, like I'm willing and ready to like do this, but I want my support, like my physical humans <laughs> that have done this before me um, to help guys. So I'm looking into doing like mediumship trainings and courses. Um, but so last week, what was really insane and I know my mum has it she has the gift like mm -hmm. but she's not tucked in at all like she's been quite spiritual she's been like you very secret you wouldn't spiritual you wouldn't know it she just kind of like is a bit tapped in you're like oh there's something there like there's some mystic there and she does love like crystals but she doesn't really do anything with it and she had a dream last week about maggots and she never really tells me about like dreams that she has, but she called me. She's like, I had a dream about maggots. And she looked it up and it means death. And I was like, interesting. Like I've been having moths, like certain moths fly in my house last week. Haven't seen another one, but I had moths in my house last week. And I was like, interesting. And I had this literally, this container here. So I would go and, if they come in, I would go and grab them and then take them outside. Um, and then one morning, it was the morning after she told me about the dream, but one of the moths was like right above my head when I woke up the next morning. It was right there. I was like, interesting. Like, and I got this intuitive nudge. You need to, you need to look into that. And so I Googled it and I started reading about like the symbolism of like moss. And there was multiple different um, explanations and meanings with different backgrounds and traditions. But one of them was like, death means there's death in a family of a loved one and it's a spirit coming looking for the light to transition to the other side and so I called my mom and I told her about it and I told her about the meaning and I'm like like there's going to be a death like there's going to be a death that ha happens and that day I got it I took it outside I took it outside onto my balcony and it flew off and just went on the balcony and then I blinked and it was it disappeared I didn't see it fly away I didn't see it move I just blinked and it was gone and then it was only less than a few hours later my mom called me and she said that her best friend's husband just passed away oh my lord speechless so Oh yeah, God. it's kind of like it's 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 crazy. It's like wow, it's like the the moth was coming to my home. It's like his what? spirit to be set free. Why? What? Why, why in that scenario, you then? Do you think? I um I wasn't as connected to my mom's best friend's um husband. I'm connected to my mom's best friend and. Uh, I used to go and like house sit for them when I was younger. Like I remember like I would clean their house for them. So when they would come home, their house was like fully clean. Um, but yeah, like no deeper connection with him. But yeah, my mom's best friend. Um, but I just think it's I got I have the gift. So I'm trying to put my mind into the viewer's mind a little bit here to try and ask 
these, I don't know if they're silly questions. I, I really don't know. So I apologize, but can, can anyone tap into this if they choose to? Yeah. Yeah. yeah they can. So I, I could have, I could do what you doing. If obviously I channel it and go for it and learn how to, I could go right. Jean and Pam, you over there, you've got, you know what I mean? Like what you did to me, could I do that to somebody else? Absolutely. That's such a great question. Everyone has this ability because the thing is, and this is my deep belief, but we're all spiritual beings. Like we're all souls in a human body and we come in and we go through conditioning and, and all of that. But at the end of the day, we're all connected to a higher power. Like whether you call it God, whatever religion, um, we're all connected to something higher and there is a greater orchestra happening. And so anyone can really connect to it. And the thing that can get in the way of it is a lot of people demonize what they don't understand and what they don't know. They don't believe in it or they push it to the side or they, um, they don't condone it. And so that stops you from being able to open up. But if you have an open mind and you're willing and you believe, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. So if you choose to believe and, and, and do it, you can definitely open it. Like there are people that are born into the world with the gift more activated and some others have to really work at it. Um, I always knew it was there for me and I feel like I'm having, I feel like I'm only just getting started, honestly, of where this. Oh, a bloody where... good start, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Jean and Bam. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I need. I actually need meant to um, call the daughter of Pam because I have the daughter of Pam on my Facebook, uh, but I won't mention her name just in case. You never know. You got might. It, it might. Got it written down. Yeah, he said. Oh, he has... I, haven't, I haven't got that written down. I, just for everybody who is um, tuning in, I do have a list of names here from other parts of the family, uh, not necessarily, necessarily directed to me. Contact contact to me, but. In case I don't know any of the names, but you bring them up or they come through, at least I've got a list that yeah. I can refer to because I don't know all of the names. So I just got that there just in case. But um, that person, the daughter, is on Facebook, so I will contact her. And I meant to actually. I forgot. I should I should contact her to tell her that her mum came through to my house because on that day you mentioned Jean and Pam was there. Another silly question maybe, I don't know, but would Jean and Pam, because Jean had a message from my mum, um, to get back in touch with her creative side and go back with a, an old passion of hers, um, and you, and, which you wouldn't have known. But she did have a, you know, in the eighties, they, they, I think flower pressing was quite common or popular. I don't know, pressing flowers and putting them in frames. So my mum used to do that. Um, you did bring something else up about a guy in a, in a, in like an apron that didn't quite make sense and i don't know what that is i did ask her but she doesn't seem to connect to it because her partner doesn't really do that type of thing but i was like maybe it's phil cooking <laughs> i don't know um but the the gene and pa uh, the so my question was gene and pam would they have known that they were there together here with me or would they have just been here separately i um so i feel they both like in the spirit world like they walk that realm together. Okay. They they walk that realm together. So I want to. So what I want to preframe with my knowledge and for all the listeners out there to. I feel like I'm going to hit some. The you know everyone has their preconceived notions. I remember when when I go and see psychics. Even when I would go and see psychics, they're like you're psychic, and I'm like, like this is when I was a teenager. I was like, what are you talking about? I remember one time I went to this psychic and she was channeling. And, oh, it was crazy, but we were sitting across from each other and I was looking at her face and she closed her eyes. She closed her eyes and next minute I saw golden eyes come through, like these golden eyes, and then it was like this golden, like, vortex. And it was like, like, that's what it, and I remember sitting there and I felt like I was, like, pulled in. I was like, ooh, what is this? Like, what is this? Like, is this the cord? Um, and that was pretty, that was pretty epic. Uh, but I even used to, like, if I'd go sit, sit down with psychics, I'm like, all right, like I'm testing them. Like, what do you know about me? Like, what can you tell me? Or like, I'm, me? Te I'm testing you. Yeah. Well, I, that, I'm not, I, and I can't, I, I, I'm not, I'm testing you in a way. Like, yeah. I can't help it because I'm so intrigued. <laughs> and you got me, as soon as you said Gina Power, I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm hooked. Before that, I'm not going to lie, I'm a bit sceptical, even though I trust everyone that's done it. 
uh, and I believed them, I still have to be there. That was my moment. That was our moment, right? So, yes, I'm in, and that's why it's... Uh, just, just quickly then, for anyone that doesn't know what channel, channeling is, what is that? Okay, so it's basically where you're opening you're opening up your vessel to channel information from spirit, from the higher realms. And this can come in through symbols, visions. Um, It can come in channeling to be able to like bring in spirits to uh, speak through you. So you're this vessel. So like you're the messenger and you're opening it up and so that you can share wisdom, information with this person. You set an intention. So yeah. um, basically like i was saying is yeah like i used to think i would like test the psychics and what i'm discovering now that it's opening up for me is you the psych the psychic has to you have to have your own psychic library there's symbols that will come to you uh and you've got to know how to interpret it so For my process, so just to explain what this is going to look like and what we're going to do and the way that I can explain it, we're going to have fun with it. Though what I've done is I will, I've done, I've set the space, I've set the intentions, I've called in my spirit team and I've set the intention to channel information for your highest good. And then what we're going to do is uh, I want to bring you into this space as well and take you through an activation and I want to connect to your higher chakras. So we've got the crown chakra and then we've got higher chakras that connect higher up. And this is where we I'll be able to start connecting into your energy. So I had never done this before on Zoom or online. Like I I didn't think it was possible until I connected with Gene and Gene and Pam. So I'm like, well, you know, energy Let's see what we've got. You know, we've opened up, we've opened up this vortex and really, yeah, everything is, is energy. So I, the way it comes through for me is I start off by, we do the activation and then I'll tune in and I'll see what comes through. And what will happen is I might get visions. I might get random of random objects, words. I might do something with my body I might feel something in my energy field and like dominoes like dominoes like laid up you've got to press you've got to push the first one so it can hit the next one and the next one next one but then if you like miss one it doesn't hit the other one so it stops all the rest of the dominoes I had kids playing with dominoes today just so you know okay see this is what I'm (laughs) at school yeah, this is what I'm saying is like it comes, it can come through and I'll give another example soon. But basically with the domino thing is I'm trying to get a full picture and I'm trying to build the vision and I'm trying to go deeper into the vision. So I'll start saying the symbols. I'll start saying whatever I see and you just take it in and then we'll kind of like debrief it yeah. because I'm going to close my eyes and really connect into it. And so we we debrief debrief it and then we come back and then we start setting intentions so we set intentions so the power of intentions let me tell you about intentions when you set intentions you are connecting to and opening up your crown chakra which is connected to the ethereal field which is the spiritual field basically where um what it's you're broadcasting what you want and so that the energy can move and and bring bring that in so every day you should like if you want to create the most magical life, set intentions. And so then we set the intention for it might be for career, it might be for relationships, it might be for something, it might be for um, your house. Like, And then I see what comes through. So let me give you an example. So I went to my friend um, was going to a speed dating event. She's like, will you come with me? I don't want to go on my own. So I was like, okay, like, why not? Like, I'm always down for an adventure. And I was like, I'm going to do a psychic reading on one of the people there. <laughs> like, I'm not there to go and date. I'm not interested in doing that at a speed dating event. I'm going to go and do psychic readings. <laughs> like, I want, to, <laughs> I want to train. I want to keep building the muscle. And I kept seeing, like, like the word king. Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. 
We'll see you then.